use headphones for the best experience, and activate the closed captions for the main character lines. Do you remember that I promised you scarier stories, right? I owe you that. Sure, why not? For me, it's always a pleasure to teach others that the muggle world is bland. No, today I'm going to tell you those I wrote myself. Yes, I write in my free time. Why are you so surprised? I find joy in stories. Books were and are my loyal companions when I haven't met Hogwarts and its walls yet. It is a way for me to keep track of my thoughts and to record my experiences and observations, a sort of private record keeping, if you will. The darkness of the human mind fascinates me. We can start right here, right now. Let me search through my diary and choose the proper one to begin with. The secret of the lake, I call this one. There was a lake, cold and deep. It was surrounded by trees, thick trees that not even the sunlight couldn't break through. It was always dark, always cold, always silent. Not many people approached it, but those who did rarely came out the same. The lake was said to be haunted, cursed by some ancient power. Whispers of its evil spread through the area, and soon no one dared to go near it. It was said that the lake drew people in, with its still cold waters and its quiet silence. People who came close to it felt a strange force, one that compelled them to get closer, to look into its depths. Those who did were swallowed up, never to be seen again. Scared already, I knew it. Come, let's go into the forest if you're already unsettled. I'll continue, lady. Those who approached the lake, either by accident or by curiosity, were never seen again. Their lives ended up being claimed by the curse, their bodies disappearing beneath the surface of its cold, dark waters. The curse's origins are unclear. Some say it was cast centuries ago by an ancient creature. Others say it's been there since the creation of the lake, as if the very water itself is cursed. Stories began to spread. Stories of children who ventured into the forest, who never came out. Stories of strange noises and cold breaths coming from the shadows of the surrounding trees. The lake was a dark, malevolent force, and its curse seemed to extend far beyond just the water. It was a place of terror, a place one would do everything possible to avoid. Some say the curse is the result of a dark magic spell cast by an ancient wizard, while others whisper that it's the lake itself that's cursed. Perhaps the very water was infused with dark magic, made with the intention to draw in innocence and claim them for its twisted purposes. There are stories, rumors, of what happens to those consumed by the lake's curse. Some say they're doomed to wander indefinitely in a cold, dark haze, their souls forever trapped in the water's depths. Others whisper that their very souls are consumed, their bodies reduced to mere shadows, to join the shadows of the trees. Worry not, the Black Lake is safe from dark, malevolent curses. Shall we read next? The Cursed Treasure. Um, there was an infamous ship, a pirate ship known for its brutality and cruelty. The crew was made up of some of the most cold-blooded and ruthless thieves the seas had ever seen, and they terrorized the shipping lanes of the Atlantic, leaving ruin and destruction in their wake. The ship itself was a fearsome sight, blackened by years of salt water and sunlight, its hull and rigging battered and torn by countless storms. Its crew was a terrifying bunch, their faces scarred and rough. What set this ship apart from the others was the treasure it carried, a treasure rumored to be cursed and possessed by the souls of the crew's victims. 
This treasure was a collection of golden coins and jewels taken from the many villages and towns the crew had raided on their cruel journeys. But these treasures were not just taken, they were soaked in blood, staining the gold and gems with the memories of the victims of the ship's crew. And it was said that the treasure was cursed, that anyone who possessed it would be haunted by the souls of those the crew had killed. You shouldn't fear cursed objects. Dark magic is another way of expressing your capabilities. The nightmares would begin slowly, subtle at first. The owner would start to have dreams of a ghostly crew, the souls of the deceased demanding that their treasures be returned. These dreams would grow more and more vivid until they were indistinguishable from reality. The owner would begin to see the ghostly crew during the day as well, their pale faces appearing out of the shadows, their voices whispering demands and threats. The nightmares would grow more and more frequent until the owner would begin to lose touch with reality. A way to stop the nightmares, you ask? It is said that there was a way to break the curse, to free the owner from the nightmares and the ghostly crew. The solution to the curse was said to be simple, in theory. The owner was simply required to return the treasure to the ocean, to cast it back into the water from which it was taken. But the thought of parting with the treasure was more than most owners could bear, and they would cling desperately to the riches, unwilling to let them go. But those who dared to return the treasure who braved the wrath of the ghostly crew to free themselves from the curse, were left with a heavy burden instead. Imperio will sort that out. Easy solution. Let's read the next one. The Smiling Man. This man lurks in the shadows, like a predator stalking its prey, his face hidden in the darkness. Whenever you look at him, you only get a brief glimpse, just a flash of a smile in the dark. But when you look away, you feel a shiver run down your spine. But the man in the shadows isn't just content to lurk. He wants to be seen. He wants you to know that he's there, watching you, waiting for the moment you look away. So he slowly inches closer to you, his footsteps quiet as a whisper, his smile never fading. And the closer he gets, the more you can feel his presence. The curse, you ask? It transfers through eye contact. If the man in the shadows looks directly into your eyes, you'll be cursed. And once you've seen his face, you become his target, his prey in this twisted game of cat and mouse. If you try to stare at him, you'll only get a brief glimpse, just a quick look at his face in the shadows. But as soon as you try to get a closer look, he'll begin to move again, slinking back into the darkness, that smile never wavering. The more you try to stare at him, the more he evades you, his presence growing stronger as he continues to stalk you from the shadows. Staring at him will only make him bolder and more determined. He will continue to watch you, his presence growing stronger in the shadows, waiting for the moment you break eye contact and give him the chance to get closer. If you break eye contact and run, the man in the shadows will only pursue you. He loves the chase. He loves to watch you trying to escape him. You'll flee through shadowy alleys, your heart pounding in your chest. But no matter how fast you run, he's always there, just lurking in the shadows, never far behind. I'll read you the last one, a special story, personal indeed. The Old Cloak. There is an ancient cursed cloak that was passed down through generations. It was said to be a simple cloak, appearing almost harmless when first glanced upon but those who possessed it discovered its true dark nature. The cloak itself is a simple piece of fabric, dark in color and seemingly innocuous at first glance. However, there is a sinister quality to its appearance, a darkness that lurks just beneath the surface. The threads themselves seem to be twisted and there is an air of malevolence about it that is almost tangible. Those who possessed the cloak slowly began to change. They became cold and apathetic Losing their souls to the cloak's dark magic, they began to see the world in a darker, more twisted light, losing themselves to the curse's influence. The cloak itself seemed to have a life of its own, feeding off the souls of its victims and growing more powerful with each passing day. Yes, people have worn the cloak. Many people have. They wear it, thinking it will bring them power, security or protection. They think they can handle its dark magic, 
that they can use it for their own purposes. But the cloak always claims its victims. No matter how strong or powerful they may be, they eventually lose themselves to its dark influence. The location of the cursed cloak has never been discovered. It could be anywhere, hidden in some forgotten chamber or secret vault, waiting for a new victim to come along and claim it. Wear it myself, you ask? I suppose I would if I had a chance. Its dark magic would be a formidable ally. But I'm sure you're concerned about the curse, aren't you? The curse slowly consumes anyone who wears the cloak, stealing away their soul and replacing it with cold, emotionless detachment. A valid concern, but one I'm not quite as worried about. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing.